Okay, today I have 31 minutes or less. Uh, we're not gonna go over a minute decluttering tasks. I am gonna tell you why these are so incredibly powerful, but first, head to a spot. It's always fun we can work together. I'm gonna start right here with this drawer. Okay, so now when we tackle something like this, we <laughs> you can see I, we've got some new cabinets we're gonna put um, in the in our spare bedroom, so. I will, I'll be excited to share all that with you, but we're just doing a minute on the drawer today. Okay, have the proper tools. So I have a black trash bag, you can't see it. It's right here. And then something else I find especially helpful in the bathroom is my bathroom time will tell bin. I literally just toss stuff in here. Cause again, we're only going for a minute. So, okay, I'm gonna put this down here and then um, I'm gonna time it because like literally I wanna show you what a huge difference we can make in a space like this in a minute. And for this space, I prioritize the things I use every single day, but I have to keep it pared down. Otherwise it's hard to get to the things we need. So I'm gonna set the timer. All right, ready, set, go. Okay, so I wanna show you some of the stuff I'm tossing. This is stuff that I'm getting rid of and putting in my time will tell bin. Uh, so things I'm tossing, I had this little lotion. It smells good, but it it's, I, I always forget, I think, cause when I look in the drawer, I only see the top of it and I just don't actually need an extra hand lotion. So it's partially used, I'm gonna let that go. This too is like a deodorant cream, didn't actually work that great. <sighs> things influencers sell us. And this lipstick is actually empty, but I thought I might want the code off the bottom cause I really liked it, but uh, I've gotten a different one since. So this can all go. There is, oh, this is a hard one. This was a MAC, oh, expensive concealer. Cass actually sold me on this one. Um, the color doesn't match and I don't know anyone else that would want it. So I'm just gonna toss it. This one hurts. Um, this is just like an eyelash thing I don't need anymore. There was this little necklace. It's not, it's one of the girls. They've forgotten about it. We don't need it. I'm gonna let that go. And then as far as what I'm putting in my time will Telbin, oh yeah, and this hand lotion too, it's like empty actually when I went. <laughs> and then what I'm putting into my Time Will Tell bin um, is some liquid foundation. I I think Diana gave this one to me again. I'm not gonna use it. Some self tanner, face tanner. It only gets used occasionally. This was like a, a I don't know, a mouth oil for like oil pulling, but I just haven't been good about doing it. Keeping it in there does not make me do it. Similar with these teeth whitening strips. These are like safe ones, right? And I, I would like to use them, but just having them in there doesn't make me use them. Like clearly I have not. So I'm gonna put all this stuff in my time will tell bin, extra bin, extra stuff bin. And then this is just a couple of things that don't belong in this bathroom in my drawer. So these are, I'm gonna go run away and put these away quick, but let me show you. I was moving fast <laughs> to do this in a minute. Let me show you the difference that we made. Okay, next, let's spend a minute decluttering a drawer. So Tom's been getting some cool new t-shirts. You've maybe seen these around this brand. And what they stand for, mental health, uh, no hero left behind, it's super cool. And he really likes how they fit and the patterns and all of that. The only problem is we can't close the drawer <laughs> anymore, right? So let's see how, how far we can get in one drawer in just a minute. I have my handy dandy timer right here. So I'm gonna start the timer and I am going to start at the bottom of the drawer because I know that all of his new t-shirts are on top. So I'm gonna look for ones on the bottom. I do have permission <laughs> to do this, don't worry. All right, now here we go. Like, there's just no way, I know for a fact he has not wore this t-shirt um, and this polo, like, he likes his new ones better. What's this white one? He doesn't wear white t-shirts like that. Like you just know, just like reach to the very bottom. Like he has, he's totally forgotten about these, you know, like, all right. But it feels so much better just to have the space freed up because like I said, this drawer was very hard. All right, so that's a minute. I'm gonna put this stuff back in. All right. And now, like, can you, I don't know if at this angle, if you can really tell, we have so much more room in here. All right, look at that. Very easily close it again. Here, I have to show you how much we're taking out of here so you can like fully appreciate it. That's a lot. I can't believe how many t-shirts this drawer actually holds. Oh my goodness. I'll have him make a quick pass and make sure these are all good to go, but 
yeah, I can't imagine he's gonna miss them. Okay, so next is to make a one minute pass through your jewelry. So this means we're just looking for things you're clearly not wearing anymore. So these three containers um, of mine have jewelry. I keep my jewelry like jewelry uh, super streamlined. So I'm just gonna look real quick for things that I have acquired and am not using. Um, I'm noticing that like I had gotten these earrings and I just thought they were like cute and summery, but I have had them for over a year and never worn them. What is this necklace? See how they just get all tangled up? I know there's better ways to maintain your jewelry, but I know I haven't worn that at all. I just have this one, where is my gold chain that I like? Oh, that's not even it either, okay. Diana had given me one from Trades of Hope um, that I really liked. See, this, I, I haven't been wearing this one either. I just have a single gold chain from Trades of Hope that I like, and these earrings, I lost one of them. So that does not do me well at all just to have one. What was I looking for? Oh, my gold chain. I think it must be in my makeup bag. Let me double check real quick. This is the gold chain that I like if I am gonna wear a necklace. It's really all I need. And then these earrings. So I have plenty. So that other stuff can go and I will not even miss it at all and it's gonna feel so much better. All right, now another one minute decluttering thing you can do is make a pass through your linens. Put your clean sheets on the bed. Put your favorite set on. Have one set of extras that's all you actually need. We have one, well. For I don't the, even actually, I don't think we have a set of extras. We don't. Okay. I'm just trying to give you more because people think that's, <laughs> like you can, you can wash your sheets and put them back on the same day. In fact, I really like the accountability. Today's video is sponsored by Helix. Our Helix mattress is our favorite and they are having a flash sale. And if you use our link down below, you can save 25%, but it's just for a short time. So make sure you check out those details. Can you believe we have had our Helix mattress for over three years now? I can believe it because we've been sleeping wonderfully for a long time. And here's a good sign that your mattress is wearing out and you might not be getting as good a night's sleep as you could is if there's sinkholes in it and every time I make our bed I'm like our mattress is still perfectly flat. We've kind of turned into mattress snobs now because we like this yeah. mattress so much. We yeah. go to Airbnbs or even hotels. Nice hotels that are supposed to have like really bougie mattresses. We're like oh we would just prefer to have our Helix right now. Absolutely. Helix are premium mattresses customized to fit your needs and conveniently shipped to your door. And we also like how easy they make it to get matched with your perfect mattress. So your spouse can do it for you. <laughs> Your spouse. So you go online, you take their sleep quiz, and they just ask you a few simple questions. Uh, what is your preferred sleep position? Back or side. I start on my stomach and then I go to the side, but mostly a side. I was going to say, I don't think you ever land on your back. No, not on my back. Ugh, no. <laughs> what kind of firmness do you like with your mattress? Firmer. Do you ever wake up with back pain? Not anymore. I yeah, used to used before to. Helix, now I don't. Mm -hmm. You should actually wake up feeling well rested. Right. So Helix delivers your mattress right to your door. Shipping is included in the US and then Tom does the, the magical part. Yeah, it's <laughs> super easy. Unbox it, pull the plastic off. That same night, that you, same can night be, you can go to sleep. You can be sleeping on it. And we know not everyone is super comfortable buying a mattress online without having the awkward experience of going to the store and laying on it in front of a salesperson. Mm -hmm. So Helix understands that and they give you 100 nights to test it out and to make sure it's a really great fit for you. They also have a 10 year warranty. If you have heard us talk about our Helix mattress, you've been thinking that, you know, it might be time for you to get a better night's sleep too. Then right now is the perfect time to try it out for yourself because you're gonna save 25% and get two free pillows as well. All right, well, I might have decluttered your t-shirts, uh, <laughs> so, but we can talk about that later. All right, I've got some more work to do. Okay, I didn't have a makeup bag on the list, but let's just do this real quick. It always feels good. I literally, what I like to do is just dump it out and then only put back in the stuff that I use and love. And so like I do keep some extra hair binders in here I really like this eyeshadow palette. I also like this new like kind of highlighter thing. I'll link to these. Um, this is my go-to eyeliner, mascara, and then this is, um, see, I have two shades. This is like my sh summer shade of concealer. This is my winter. So the summer one can go in my time will tell bin. Um, so these all for sure. I had gotten this uh, blush, but it doesn't, it didn't work as, I'm gonna put that in the time will tell. I don't need to justify it to you. This is the cheap mineral, Maybelline mineral powder I wear. Um, 
lipstick. Oh yeah, Diana had given me, see I have two chains, like really pretty chains from Trades of Hope. So I'm gonna keep one in my makeup bag because I just, that's where I keep it. And then one I'm putting back in my drawer here because I have room. Hair binders, extra eyelash glue if eyelashes would come loose. And then this is my bronzer. Um, and then these earrings I'm gonna put back in the drawer too. I think I'd rather have them in here than in my makeup bag. Um, extra set of contacts I like to have in there. Okay, we're actually, oh yeah, and this chapstick, it doesn't work anymore. Like it, it rolled, it went down and we can't get it back up. So why am I keeping that in there, right? Okay, we're not doing too bad. This is perfume, I'll keep in there. I don't need all these extra hair binders. We'll keep that in there. Okay, or the comb, so that stuff. All right, well, it wasn't a lot that needed to come out, but that just feels so much better. It closes really easily. Um, anytime it just really, like you can tell the, the inventory is creeping up, you know, it's just everything's a little bit harder. Okay, good. Let's move on. Okay, next let's do a one minute hair product uh, declutter and then we'll move out of the bathroom. Lots of other places that we can work too. But here's what I like about having these two bins down here. And I've talked about these bins and hair products quite a bit lately, so I will not belabor the point. But what I like is that if we start to have products sitting outside of here, that means we've acquired things and it's time to declutter it. So I'm just always looking for clues that a space needs to be decluttered, whether it's we're putting stuff outside, it's not easy to open and close the drawer, I have to move stuff around to close my makeup bag. So I'm always trying to look for those signals of that like frustration and then I'm like, oh, okay, that means it's time to go through it. Because if I have both these containers full of hair products and like body products and stuff, like I have plenty. So then I can just pull them out make a quick pass through. Um, like Adeline just got two new uh, lotions for her birthday. Well, we don't need both of these out <laughs> right now, as lovely as they are. Um, I think I think it's the Christmas morning one she likes. Yeah, this one she likes the most. So we can leave that out for now. This I can throw into the time will tell bin. When we need more lotion, like when she uses that up, I think we'll be good for a while. <laughs> then we can always pull it out. But in the meantime, it feels so good having everything fit in there nice and neat. Okay, I naively put top of the fridge on <laughs> the list when I was making my list and now I'm looking at this and like, oh no, what's a minute gonna do? Not true though, a minute helps us to get started, to refamiliarize ourselves with what here. And I might not be able to fully declutter every space in a minute, obviously, but I can always make it better. So in a space like this, I am looking for my the, the big tight ticket items, like the things that are gonna make the biggest difference. And so we have this tray back here. Um, when we got a new fridge, it doesn't fit quite as well as it had in the past, and that's why stuff is always getting piled up outside of it instead of inside of it. But you know what? Let's just do this. We're gonna start, we're gonna set the timer for a minute and just see how far we can get. So here, I am just looking for stuff that clearly doesn't belong, is garbage. There was just, so much random <laughs> stuff up there. Um, getting all of our gift cards put together, we keep them in the corner of that tray, other loose change and random parts. Some stuff I'm just sticking in the tray. The tray is meant to be a catch-all and just contain all of the randomness. So I'm fine with that, but like I said, stuff was just getting set outside of it. And then when the tray starts to overflow, then I recruit Tom and I say, hey, could we make a quick pass through this together? We don't have to fully declutter it, we just have to make room in it again. So it is good to go through it every so often. But meanwhile, he knows if there's, if he's missing some key or random piece to something, he knows that that is the first place to look. That's where I put stuff like that or any of us put stuff like that if we come across it in the house. So it's, it's working, it's serving its purpose, but like I said, stuff was just getting piled up outside of it. Okay, next is to make a one minute pass through your cords and chargers and all that type of stuff. So cord management is something I haven't done a good job with because what happens? We get all these new cords and we don't label them and so we have no idea what they're for. And so it's something in the new year I'm trying to do a better job of. So I got some cord labels. They come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes on Amazon, um, but they're really nice because they're just Velcro and you can just write on them with a fine point shelf 
Sharpie. Adeline just got a, a little portable alarm clock and it charges, it doesn't take batteries. And the thing is, it doesn't actually, it should last like multiple months being charged is what it says. And so what happens within that time? Well, we forget what this is for. Now, many cords are universal and so you can use multiple, like the same cord for different devices. But um, by putting a label on it, and again, I can just write on it with this fine point Sharpie, then it's much easier and there's no guesswork to it. So I have my cord label, I can just put it right here on the cord. Voila, and now we will always know what it's for. And this is super helpful in the future, right? Because then there is no guessing and we can know when we need to get rid of cords. But otherwise, as I'm going through, I'm looking for ones that are at the bottom and the back, like similar to the drawer with the t-shirts, like which ones have been forgotten about. And then I'm also looking at like, you can see these both have the same end to them. So we don't need both. Often they're for toys and different things. Um, so already I know I can let one of these go and make some extra space in these types of drawers. And I went over a minute on this one because you just get into it and you don't wanna stop, right? Like it would've been silly just to stop it. It feels so much better having these cords all wrapped up and pulling a few of the extras out. Okay, next let's talk about food storage containers. We could make this take a long time or do it really quickly by agreeing that we don't need as many as we've been keeping and we should store them with the lids on um, so that they're easier to use. We never have to waste time matching up a lid. I thought that fit. That <laughs> doesn't fit. Okay, that goes to this one. Uh, we never have to waste our time. When you go to put food away after dinner or another time you need a container, you just grab it out. The lid's already on, but it also reveals what extra lids you have without a bowl that goes to it. So I'm gonna get these put back in place. Now I know we only need six to seven food storage containers and that's plenty for us. If I go to grab a food storage container and they're all gone, it means there's something in the fridge <laughs> that needs to come out and is no longer good and you know how that goes. So, and then I no longer keep these plastic ones like that, you know, lunch meat comes in. And so these are all, they just don't fit up here and we don't need them. I know it's hard to sometimes part with a perfectly good container, but I've tested this over the years. We don't need them, we don't use them. They just clutter up this space. So I'm gonna recycle these. And as long as we're up here, let's talk about serving dishes really quick. I think for many of us, like our fantasy self entertains a lot and creates these beautiful spreads of dishes that we're serving and it's it's quite lovely um but day in day out most of us don't use a lot of fancy serving dishes and so this is the shelf you know i like to use the container concept only f you know keep what comfortably fits there so this is the shelf i've designated for serving dishes so we have some extra cups here so if we have uh, extra company then we'll use those and then these are just a few um little like extra serving dishes but I'm looking at this, like I I can't even tell you the last time I used these, so I'm actually gonna move these out and put them in the basement. I have an extra like an overflow kitchen bin down there where I put this kind of stuff. And then I have simplified down the rest of our serving dishes. There's actually four stacked up in here. You just can't totally tell. I really enjoy these dishes. I like them. I like that they all stack up. And honestly, anytime we entertain it, this is more than enough. So I'm gonna keep this here. And then this was a cute little thing my mom got me that I like to put on our open shelves sometimes, especially for spring, I'll probably put this out for some extra color. It's not a lot up there, but it's okay. I love how it feels when these shelves are highly simplified. So we can choose and we can prioritize that. We don't have to cram it full of all the serving dishes that we got when we registered for our wedding or that we've acquired over the years or that were passed on to us. We don't actually have to keep all those in here. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so you select the number that feels right to you for me. This feels good, functions well, and I still always have what I need. Okay, and as long as we're kind of looking at some of our upper cabinets, this cabinet above our microwave is where I keep vases and vases, pretty much. Um, I also have this, this is, it, I guess it's like a fondue thing, but I like to put it on our open shelves for the color that it brings. Um, and I think I'm gonna use it in the spring again. So. I'm gonna leave this here. If I don't use it in the spring, then I'm gonna donate it. But vases can have a way of multiplying. Uh, Tom got me this incredible arrangement for my birthday this year, and it came in this nice vase. 
it's pretty big. Can you tell how big it is? I don't know. And initially I'm like, wow, that would be so cool to like fill it up again with flowers. And like, could you imagine it like full of like peonies and um, everything? And then I'm like, I just don't normally do things like that. And even for like the scale of our house, like this isn't quite right. And I have vases that I love. This is like my favorite vase. Um, this is another one I got recently that I just really like a lot. Ooh, sorry, I like the shape of it and everything. So I'd be more likely to use this one and this one. And so I'm constantly asking myself, okay, do I know for sure I'm gonna use it in the future? I don't know for sure. Okay, if it doesn't, it doesn't fit up here. It's like way too big. Do I have a designated spot for extra or overflow bases? And I don't. Okay, so then do I want to create a spot for these? And in the past, I would have just put this in our basement on the shelves down there. I would have forgotten about it till I go to clean the basement and then I'd come across again and be like, oh right, I was gonna put flowers in that. And then I'd forget about it again because I don't actually have a designated spot for overflow ba bases. Do I want to? Do I imagine I'm gonna start doing floral arrangements or I'm gonna give them away or I'm gonna bring them places or whatever where it might be nice to have extra bases? No, not at this season in our life, maybe someday. Okay, how hard would it be to replace? Well, uh, if you've been to a thrift store lately, you can find vases by the like gazillions. What, do I want to have to rebuy it? No, but I do know it would be pretty easy to come by again. So even though it's a cool, beautiful vase, I have other ones that I can use and I don't want to create a spot for overflow bases. <laughs> Long explanation to say, I'm gonna donate that one. These were just, I think they're just some red wine glasses stemless. We don't really do that, but I had used them as little vases, but now I have other ones that I would use in, that I would use instead. So I'm also gonna let these go because it just makes this not function very well. It's a kind of awkward cabinet to deal with because there's no shelf in it or anything. Um, and I thought like, oh, maybe Tom could add a shelf, whatever. No, or I could just simplify it down <laughs> to what comfortably fits in here. Okay, let's do that, right? Okay, and I was actually just realizing as I was straightening this up, this is actually a serving dish. And I think with the extra space in there, I could move it over with the other serving dishes and then this space would function even better. So I'm gonna move this over. Sometimes we just need fresh eyes. I'm like, why is that in there? <laughs> like, I don't know. It's a little unconventional uh, where we store our plastic bags, but we just wanna make sure it's wherever they're stored that it's not overflowing. Extra inventory and clutter is very stressful to our, our brain. So just making a regular pass through things like the plastic bags and then also the paper bags. Again, this can feel like fairly insignificant. Like, you know, I need to get my house decluttered. Oh, plastic bags, that's not a big deal. But it's, it's every single drawer. Like, I mean, we could spend a minute on each drawer in our kitchen and it would feel so much better. And again, we don't have to make tough decisions. We can just look for the easy stuff. Uh, bags we're not using that are extra, that need to get recycled. Extra linens that uh, just aren't in good repair. It's too full for this drawer. Um, another thing on our list is boxes. So to take a minute to break down boxes and bring them out to the recycling. A couple extra boxes are often handy to have on hand, but we don't need lots and lots of boxes. And again, once they start to stack up, then they make our spaces more difficult to use. Our brain registers it as clutter, which feels stressful. So keeping this kind of stuff broken down and put into the recycling, it makes our house feel a lot better. Okay, next, how about the random paper piles that accumulate on the corner of our kitchen island or counter peninsula? And the scary thing about these is it's just randomness. And so we might have uh, the user's manual for our new coffee maker, um, some artwork that the kids made, along with a new seed catalog and a calendar that a vendor sent us in the mail that we I think we wanna use, right? <laughs> and so what do we do with it? And so just taking a minute to go through this, to sort out anything that's expired, that you're like, oh, I thought I was gonna use that, that I'm not. Um, you know, letting the kids' artwork go. It was special a few days ago when they made it. Now they've forgotten about it and it's not worth putting in my memory bin. So even if you don't get through the whole pile, just taking a minute to re-familiarize yourself with what's there, pull out anything that's super important so you don't forget about it, and discard some of the other stuff is still gonna make us feel better. Also, just tidying it up and straightening it all up makes a big difference. Now, ultimately, we wanna work to not have these anymore. I have, I have some good systems <laughs> for this in my paper clutter videos. But even if you only have a minute today to make a pass through that pile, tear it down a little bit and straighten it up is gonna, again, for your brain, it's gonna feel so much better. Okay, next let's take a one minute pass through your utensil drawer. 
And this surprised me because um, during our post-holiday reset, I, I went through this with you all who were part of that, and I was surprised <laughs> to even find things in here that I wasn't using because I go through my kitchen so frequently <laughs> now, right? Here's the safety that I want to give to you because even I was going to put this stuff down in the basement, you know, just like, well, I don't know. I, I got it for a purpose. Like maybe the, the type of cooking we'll do will come around back around to it. But here's what is so cool about any of these like utensils and gadgets and things is that pretty much every single one of them can re be replaced with a knife or something else. We buy a lot of these things to make our lives easier, but the truth is they're a pain to clean. Now, if you use your garlic press every night when you're making dinner and that's your thing, of course you wouldn't get rid of it, right? You like it, you don't mind cleaning it. I don't like cleaning it and I would rather chop it with a knife. So it, it's very safe to let this go. Even this little grater thing never actually worked that well. It's not that sharp and it is a pain to clean. A muddler, I don't, we don't, we just don't, right? And so again, I can use other things. So it's usually pretty safe to let go of this. And the beauty of doing it in a one minute chunk, like set the timer and go, is that we're making quick decisions. <laughs> we're moving a little bit of extra clutter out and then we're just going on with our day. Okay, now we're just gonna move one drawer over to the junk drawer. Um, I've heard it, like people say like, wait, you're a minimalist, you still have a junk drawer? Um, some of you who are very clever have said, once you get it organized, it's actually called a utility drawer, <laughs> right? And ours, it does, it gets messed up again, and then I do a quick pass through it. I'm always just looking for garbage, or I kind of see this as like a time will tell drawer, because I feel like stuff gets put in here to see if it's actually gonna get missed. like. Gage made this a few months ago, and at the time it was very special, but now he's completely forgotten about it, so it's okay to let this go. Um, I had mentioned Adeline got a new portable alarm clock. It came with a lanyard thing. I don't know, I don't even know why it got put in here. There's no need for this, right? So I just make a quick pass, look for garbage, things that we're clearly not using, and then again, just continue on. But it's this, it's these habits, it's this, this maintenance that we do you know, every so often that really makes these spaces that we have decluttered and we have put some organization in place is what makes them keep functioning well and then we can find the things we need when we do need them. Oh my goodness, this is so funny. If you saw my video at the beginning of the year about 500 things to declutter from your house, I said like, look for duplicates in your medicine cabinet and I found three things of aloe and I'm like, there's just no possible way we'll use more than one and I just found another thing of aloe. Oh my goodness. Uh, I'll have to, I'm gonna look at the dates and see which one is newer. But also, one minute, just make a quick pass through your bins of medicines. I am always amazed how quickly stuff expires. Like, time just goes so fast and so, I've always been floored when I take a look at expiration dates and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is like three years past expired. Like even this, 522. And I know like a lot of it I'm sure is safe. Like ibuprofen I wouldn't worry about. Um, but again, it's telling us that we're not using it. Even if all you do is go back through here and stand everything up and straighten everything up, it still is gonna feel considerably better than how it feels when it's just all a mess. So you might just go in with the mindset, I'm just gonna straighten everything up and then you'll likely you'll find some stuff to declutter too. I'm trying to find, it's not always super easy to find the expert. Oh, here we go. Oh yeah, 1222, okay. Again, I don't think this goes bad, but this one is good until uh, 724. So I'm probably just gonna keep this one and I'm gonna let that one go to. I do not like wasting things and getting rid of perfectly good things. But again, it is just, it is so much more. All Our whole family could get sunburned like five times and we would still have way too much aloe, right? Um, so it's just way more than we had ever used clearly by the expiration date and it being past it. So it does not feel good to be wasteful. I fully, like I agree with you 100% on that, but keeping it does not solve the problem. And this is also where I li really like having a black trash bag to stick this kind of stuff in because I used to think it was so my family wouldn't second guess decisions, but it's actually more for me. Like I said, I'm super frugal and I don't like being wasteful. So anyways, black trash bags are very helpful when we're making some of these decisions. Okay, and then next let's just turn around and face the other way from the medicine cabinet and make a quick pass through the shower. So obviously just looking for containers that are almost empty or random or hotel samples that are almost gone. Anything that just doesn't need to be in there. Again, this is a space that I feel like it just feels more peaceful when there's not so much stuff. I even, I don't keep everything in there. Like I have like a deep conditioner, right? 
I don't keep it in there. You're, you only do it every so often. So I bring it into the shower with me when I need it. Now we have six people using the shower. And so I also want to keep it streamlined. There's like water coming out. Um, I also want to keep it streamlined for those purposes, especially when it's stuff that we're just not really using. If you use it every day, of course, keep it in there. But if not, then maybe consider moving it out. Okay, and then what about flat surfaces like your dining table, kitchen table? This really just requires regular upkeep. And so it's, it's not about lying to yourself and saying, oh, I can complete the whole thing in a minute. Rather, it's knowing that a minute is very powerful for two things. One, we can put away things that just don't belong here that have homes, they're just not there. I'll show you. And then the other is that it re-familiarizes ourselves with what's there. We often assume everything that's landed here is homeless and I don't know what to do with it or I, there's some action I need to take and I don't have time for, but that's not usually the case. So even as I was looking at this stuff, a lot of it just needs to be put away. Uh, paintbrush needs to get put with our paint stuff. Tissue paper needs to go in our wrapping bin. A game just needs to go in the game cabinet. If people would just put stuff away the first time, right? This just has a spot. In the past, something like this would have hung me up. These were paint samples. Um, Adeline wanted to paint their bedroom, so we got samples. She actually already got the paint and already painted it herself. So it looks great. I'll show it to you at some point. Um, in the past, though, I thought like, oh, I should keep these, I don't know, for something. I'll do a craft project or we might want to use it for something. I don't know. All the things, right? And now I'm like, no, this is inventory that I do not want to manage. So this, I am just going to throw away. I'm going to go put all this stuff away quick. Like I'm actually just going to go put this stuff away quick. So it's just fully dealt with. Um, there's probably a couple other things. Um, this was just the stuff I was accumulating to, to show you for paper clutter. Um, so this can all just get recycled. Actually, there are some hair binders here that need to get put away. Well, that's probably about all I can hold. So I'll go make a pass and put it away. And again, this space, it's not perfect, it's not complete, but even in a very short time, I can make it look a whole lot better. Okay, so that was 18 things we just went around and did together. I have a full 30. Your purse, your drop zone or entryway, spending a minute there, uh, clothes that are on your floor, for sure, top of your nightstand, top of your dresser, just going through the fridge or the freezer, turning things around. Again, looking for stuff that's in there that, oh, that's about to go bad. Oh, I'm gonna pull that out and use it for dinner tonight. A pass through books, uh, toys or pet toys. There's been lots of questions about toys now. Uh, the long story short with toys is that kids are not good at managing inventory. Kids don't need lots of toys. Craft supplies, taking a minute to go through that. Organizing things, straightening it up, putting stuff back where it goes and linen closet and your car. Here's my main takeaway though. Uh, often I'm asked about how do I find time for decluttering, especially if I have young kids or I have energy limitations um, or I'm caring for aging parents or all the things that really pull out our time and our bandwidth. And what I would say is that we have to remember that five, 10, 15 minutes, it actually matters and it makes a difference. And there's something really powerful about these short bursts of time because we're going in focused, we're making quick decisions. If you come across something that's hard, you just skip over it. We're just looking for easy stuff obvious uh, garbage and donations and duplicates of aloe vera and other things that have just found their way into your house. Most things aren't actually a hard decision, especially as we spend more time together, but we've built it up in our head to be big and scary. So we just go in saying, I'm just gonna straighten up this, this spot. I'm gonna look for something that's expired or a duplicate. And before we know it, we are finding tons of stuff to move out of our house and that just feels so good. I want so badly for you to have a decluttered and simplified home because it is so enjoyable to live in. It, it is truly like such a gift that I feel like uh, we've given to our family. And so I could never go back. And I just feel for those of you who are still at the beginning of your journey and you're feeling kind of stressed or, uh, you know, like it's just really hard or you're not finding the time. And I just say, whatever you have to do, keep going, use the little pockets of time that you have. And before you know it, you're going to be here too, looking back and realizing that you can maintain a lot of these spots in one minute or five minutes and it's just really not a big deal and so i know you can get there too um, and i'm really excited for you because it makes being a mom more enjoyable and maintaining your house so much better okay i will stop now <laughs> on all of that but uh, i just really want that for you all right well i'm going to link to um, some other videos that kind of go along with this same theme that you might find helpful we also have our playlist of long format videos if you do get some longer chunks of decluttering time those can be good to put on in the background as well. But I love you. I hope you have a really good day and I'll see you again soon.